Chapter Ten of the Story of Mankind. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Michelle Crandall. The Story of Mankind by Hendrik von Loon. Chapter Ten: The Phoenicians. The Phoenicians who gave us our alphabet. The Phoenicians, who were the neighbors of the Jews were a Semitic tribe which, at a very early age, had settled along the shores of the Mediterranean. They had built themselves two well-fortified towns, Terror and Sidon, and within a short time they had gained a monopoly of the trade of the western seas. Their ships went regularly to Greece and Italy and Spain, and they even ventured beyond the Straits of Gibraltar to visit the Scilly Islands, where they could buy tin. Wherever they went, they built themselves small trading stations, which they called colonies. Many of these were the origin of modern cities, such as Cadiz and Marseille. Here is a picture of a Phoenician trader. They bought and sold whatever promised to bring them a good profit. They were not troubled by a conscience. If we are to believe all their neighbors, they did not know what the words honesty or integrity meant. They regarded a well-filled treasure chest, the highest ideal of all good citizens. Indeed, they were very unpleasant people, and did not have a single friend. Nevertheless, they have rendered all coming generations one service of the greatest possible value. They gave us our alphabet. The Phoenicians had been familiar with the art of writing, invented by the Sumerians, but they regarded these pothooks as a clumsy waste of time. They were practical businessmen, and could not spend hours engraving two or three letters. They set to work and invented a new system of writing, which was greatly superior to the old one. They borrowed a few pictures from the Egyptians, and they simplified a number of the wedge-shaped figures of the Sumerians. They sacrificed the pretty looks of the older system for the advantage of speed, and they reduced the thousands of different images to a short and handy alphabet of twenty-two letters. In due course of time, this alphabet traveled across the Aegean Sea and entered Greece. The Greeks added a few letters of their own and carried the improved system to Italy. The Romans modified the figure somewhat and in turn taught them to the wild barbarians of Western Europe. Those wild barbarians were our own ancestors, and that is the reason why this book is written in characters that are of Phoenician origin and not in the hieroglyphics of the Egyptians or in the nail script of the Sumerians. End of chapter 10. Recording by Michelle Crandall, Fremont, California, September 2008.